رسول الله إذا درك هولا من كنت مولاه فهذا اليوم مولا يوم الغدير علي حيدر كرار صار أميري أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وخاتم النبيين أب القاسم المصطفى محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعسومين Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to our Eid al Ghadir transmission where we will be discussing the events that unfolded the 10th year after Hijrah on Eid al Ghadir in the plains of Ghadir Khum. It is a day which is remembered as a day of Eid. It is a symbolic occasion for the Shia, especially around the world. A day where Mu'mineen and Mu'minat, believers in the wilayat of Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib, come together and remember this day as a symbolic day of celebration. A day in which Rasulullah called Imam Amir al Mu'mineen, raised his hand, and announced his imama and wilaya to the Muslims at large, to the Hujjaj that were present in the first and last Hajj of the Holy Messenger of Allah. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Indeed, it is a day in which we gather to remember such an occasion so that this belief, this aqeedah is saved in our generations to come. And indeed, our ulama have stressed greatly on remembering such a day. There are many mustahab a'mal, there are mustahab fast on this day. And so, out of all of the days, the Shia mu'mineen take this day very seriously because it forms a part of our theology. It, beca it became a part of our belief and principles. To discuss further and to further shed light on this topic, to celebrate this grand occasion, we are joined by a very special guest, someone who does not need any introduction, a great teacher, a scholar, a muballigh, Hujjatul Islam wal Muslimin, Mawlana Sayyid Ali Raza Rizvi, I'd like to thank you for taking your time out to join us on this great day where we shall together discuss this great day of Eid. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you for your time and without any further delay, I have a very simple question. Why do the Shia commemorate this Eid of Eid al Ghadir, also known as Eid al Wilai, with so much importance? Because we have Eid al-Fitr, we have Eid al-Adha. All Muslims share that Eid. But I have come across some of the terms which say that this Eid is the greatest of Eid, the most noble of Eid, a'zamuhum, ashrafuhum, such words have been used in regards to this Eid. Why is the reason for that? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Um, we celebrate Eid al-Fitr at the completion of the month of Ramadan. And we celebrate Eid al-Adha at the completion of Hajj. Um, but if you look at the verses in the Holy Quran, it says, "Al-yoma akmal tu lakum dinakum wa atmam tu alaykum naamati." Today we have completed your religion for you, and we have perfected uh, all the blessings upon you. So it is a completion of religion. That's right. why we celebrate Eid al-Ghadir. Completion of religion and um, the seal of the prophets. Is the Holy Prophet وسلم, and the biggest and the greatest proof that he is the last messenger is Ghadir. Yes. It is the end of Nabuwat and the beginning of Imamat and Vilayat. Uh, in the traditions, like you've said in your question, uh, Imam Ayyam al have said, the Imams have said, it is Akbarul Ayyad or A'adha Murashraf. You know, all of these words have been used. It is the greatest Eid. Yes, yes. And it is the greatest Eid because. We do not um, choose, pick and choose the parts of religion, but we celebrate and believe in the entire religion. Mm -hmm. And look at the words used in the plains of Khadir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Ma'idah, verse number 67, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhu rasul, ya ayyuhu rasul, ballig ma unzil ilayka mirabbik. Fa in lam taf'al fa ma ballagta risalata. 
Wallahu ya'asamu min al-nas. O my messenger, O my beloved messenger, balligh ma unzila lak min rabbik. Deliver what has been sent to you from your Lord. Fa in lam taf'al fa ma balaghta risalata. If you don't do this, then you haven't as if you have not done anything. Now some people try and show as if uh, the Almighty is saying that if you don't do this, then Allah, uh, you haven't done anything. Uh, meaning, if you don't deliver this, then you have done something wrong. No. The message here is that, فَإِنْ تَفْعَلْ فَمَا بَلَّغْتَ رِسَالَتَا That if you don't do this, then nothing has been done. Meaning everything will be undone. Everything will be undone because if after all the troubles you have taken and all the previous messengers have taken, mm -hmm. if you don't now leave the religion in the hands of someone like Ali ibn Abi Talib, mm -hmm. then all the troubles you've taken right. will go to waste. to waste. Everything will be destroyed because uh, it is he who can look after the religion like you want. So is this a serious threat to the Prophet? Is Allah in a way threatening the messenger? That if you have not done this, then I do not accept anything of you? Yeah, this is what I disagree with, that, that he, it is not a threat. It is rather um, a message or uh, uh, the secret behind the Vilayat of Ali ibn Talib that if you don't do this, it's not a threat that if you don't do this, then you haven't done anything. Right. It is rather a message that if you don't do this, then all the right. hard work will, will finish because you need someone very strong uh, in his character, in his knowledge, right. in his uh, personality, in his bravery, courage, ev in everything. A perfect uh, character you need mm -hmm. to look after your religion. Okay. So everything will, will finish if you don't give it to Ali ibn Abi Talib. So it's not a threat, it's rather um, uh, a, a secret message that it is, nothing will remain. So in a way it is highlighting the importance of wilaya. It is highlighting the importance of Eli and it is highlighting the importance of Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. Right. Wilayat of Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen. Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salatu salam. That if it is not he, if it is not him who looks after the religion, then there is no other person who can, at the time, who can look after the religion, who can strongly defend and promote and take forward the troubles of the Holy Prophet and previous right. prophets. Right. So... Because a lot of Muslims pose questions, we have the two Eids, why is it that the Shias celebrate that Eid? So I guess my question would be, if it is such an important event that took place in history, and as history states, many hundred thousand Hajjaj, if not more, were present at least witnessing such an event, then why is it not celebrated by the other schools of thought? Should it be celebrated by the other schools of thought, other madhahib in the religion of Islam? What is your opinion on that? Uh, I think now we see that there are other Muslims who have started to, to celebrate as well. Some of the Sufis and some of the people who believe in the vilayat of Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. Um, and likewise, they've also started celebrating Eid Milad al-Nabi with us. So we don't only believe, you know, we also say Milad al-Nabi's Be'that is also Eid. Eid Milad al-Nabi is Eid, 15th of Shaban, you know, these are all ayad. Right. So, but... But this being the greatest. The, this being the greatest. Right. So now a lot of the people were not, they were only celebrating two Eids, but they were not celebrating the other Eids. Mm -hmm. But now we do see a change that a lot of the Muslims have now started celebrating. Number one. Number two, uh, because the followers of Ahlul Bayt, especially the followers of Ali ibn Talib alayhi salam, believe that it is not only um, uh, an, an announcement of his vilayat, but it is also the Holy Prophet وسلم, who is deciding his successor, who is announcing his successor. He has been ordained from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to announce who his successor will be. Right. The other Muslims don't see it as that. So they see that it is one of the announcement or one of the merits or one of the virtues of Ali ibn Abi Talib salam, and not and not the decisive uh, announcement of Khilafat and uh, Imamat. Right, right. So they believe that the Holy Prophet did not announce who his successor will be right. after him. Uh, while we believe the Shias of uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib, the uh, followers of Ahlul Bayt believe that this is the uh, decisive um, 
announcement from the Holy Prophet for his succession. For his succession. So it is, that's the difference between us and them. So it, uh, in a way it's a split between the two main schools of thoughts. Yes, it is the main split between the two schools of thought that one, uh, but two de main denominations, the followers of Khilafat and the followers of Imamat. And the followers of Khilafat believe that the Holy Prophet left it for the Ummah to decide who his successor will be. Okay. And the followers of Imamat right. believe that the Holy Prophet, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided for him. The Holy Prophet announced it, who his successor will be, who his successors will be. And he said in the plains of Ghadir um, that there will be 12 successors after me. Right. Ali wa akhirahum Mahdi. Mm -hmm. So three or four times in the khutbah, in the sermon of Ghadir, the, okay. 12, uh, the Holy Prophet ﷺ mentioned the 12th Imam's name. That my 12 successors, the first of them will be Ali and the last one of them will be Mahdi. Mahdi. So I do recall at least three times, but it could be four times, right, that the okay. Holy Prophet has mentioned 12th Imam in Khutbah of Ghadir. In the Khutbah of Ghadir. So then, can we say that the Messenger of Allah ﷺ was doing exactly what the previous Prophets did? Yeah. And what was the sunnah of the previous prophets in announcing their awsiya did they have a special order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like we believe for Rasulullah or did they leave it to their ummah what was the ravish or the sunnah or the custom of all of the anbiya Allah uh, you can see very clearly in the holy quran wa inna min dhurriyatihi whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the successors he chooses uh, for Adam, he, for example, Hazrat Adam alayhi salam, he chose uh, Sheath or Seth uh, alayhi salam. And you can see that he chooses uh, for Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam, he says, إِنِّي جَاعِلُكَ لِلنَّاسِ إِمَامَ قَالَ وَمِن ذُرِّيَّةِ قَالَ لَا يَنَعَلُ هَدِ ذَالَمِينَ Allah says, you know, when Allah says, I am making you an Imam for the mankind, he says, and from my progeny. So he asked, Allah says, uh -huh. La yinalu hadith al-amin. I will decide, meaning it is my decision. Right. Okay. La, well, but my covenant will not reach uh, oppressors. Right. So very clearly, Allah says, Inni jailoka lin nasa imama. Jail. He does not use inni jailoka, which is a future tense. Mm -hmm. So he does not use it as a verb. He uses it as a noun. Jailoka. Mm -hmm. Fa'il. Fa'il. Meaning he is the doer. It is not that he's just doing it now, it's not a verb, mm -hmm. it is not an action. Okay. He says it is something that is his right. Choosing his deputy is his right. So he says, Ja'il. So he's saying it's my duty. Yeah, it is my right. It is, it is up my to duty. Me. It is up to me. So I'm the Ja'il. Okay. Not a Ja'alu. It is not verb. He uses a noun. It is not an action that I'm doing now. No, it is that it is mine. Same words have been used for Adam. Inni ja'ilun fil ardh khalifa. Hmm. Again, he says ja'il. Yes, yes. Fil ardh khalifa. So b both of the words have been used. So we in Muslims, our Sunni brothers use the word khalifa. We use the word imam. Allah has used both of them in the Holy Quran for Adam and Ibrahim. For Adam, he says, Inni ja'ilun fil ardh khalifa. For hmm. Ibrahim, alayhi salam, he says, Inni ja'iluka lin nas imama. Right. But both again, he says ja'il. It is my duty. It is my thing. It is my work. It is my... It is not on the Ummah. It is not for the people to decide. Mm -hmm. It is not for the people to decide. It is my decision. Right. And even the prophets don't have a say in it. So Adam, he chose, and the angels. All the angels got together. And they all said, uh, Are you going to appoint someone? Uh, who will cause bloodshed? Who will, yes, blood. who will uh, shed blood on earth and who will cause mischief? Allah said, Inni I know something that you don't know. When he said this, he also said, um, so it is my doing. Inni now, the Lord who does not accept the ijma, the consensus of, the people. of all the angels who are infallible. Yes, yes. He says, if all the angels do consensus, it's not acceptable for me. Inni a'lamu ma'ala ta'lamun. I know something you don't know. Then how will he accept the ijma of the people, the sinful people, right? Who are not even infallible? Of course. So he says even the consensus and ijma of the angels is unacceptable for me. Forget the ijma and the consensus of yeah, sinful people, mm. or people who are not infallible. That's a very interesting point. So he says that no, it is my decision. So Khalifa and Imam both are my 
choice. Nabi is my choice. And whenever you look in the Holy Quran, Allah says, I will choose. So he always chooses for all the prophets, the right. successors. If Ismail salam, Ishaq, for Ishaq he uses Yaqub. Yaqub had 12, Hazrat Yaqub salam, had 12 sons. And Yusuf is 11th. Okay. Now technically the older ones should get it, but Allah says, no, I choose and I've chosen Yusuf. Mm. He chose Yusuf the second last of them. So it is his decision. Mm. So Allah chooses for every prophet he's chosen, then why would he leave it for the Holy Prophet, for the Ummah to decide? So he says, no, I will choose. And it doesn't make sense that the Messenger of Allah gives us small detail about everything of the Deen of Allah, but he leaves such a huge gap behind of leadership, which is one of the most important fundamental parts of the holy, uh, holy religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, that's the perfect point that the Prophet who tells you the details of the prayers, even the recommended prayers, the fasting, the Hajj and the Umrah and yes. even cutting off your nails that you should start from the left exactly. hand side and end on the right and how to eat food and how to drink. And he says that my Ummah will be divided into 73 sects just like the Jews into 71 and the Christians into 72 sects. My Ummah will be divided into 73 and only one of them will be right. So how, when he's in himself informing the Ummah that you will be divided, how could he leave them for division? So he must decide. And so we believe that planes of Qadir, and especially the words tell you that it is not something small, something very major. Of the khutbah itself. You know, like how he began. He says, whoever has gone forward, call them back. Right. Whoever's left behind, call them in Qadir. So Qadir is a junction where people Qadir was a junction where people would go from there to Medina, you know, from Mecca, the people were coming, they would go to Medina, to Yemen, to Iraq, to Syria, to okay. all. There was a junction. Right. He says, now call everyone back and the people who are coming, call them. This is a junction. Mm -hmm. And everyone should gather here. Right. I also say that it is a junction of Aqeedah. It is a junction of belief, faith as well. Yes. Not only just of traveling, right. of journeys. So he said everyone should come back. So look at the importance he gives to Qadir, that everyone should gather and it is something very important. People are saying it is hot, it is day, we've just finished Hajj, can we not leave it? He said no. Hmm. Something that has to be delivered. Ya Rasul, ma rabbik. So it is something very important. So he calls everyone back and then he says the longest khutbah of his life. And then he says, Alasto awla bikum min anfusikum. Mm. Ha, am I not, do I not have priority over your souls and you yourselves? Do I not have more priority over your souls? So it is a junction of uh, faith as well, faith aqeedah. As well, right. So I believe that anyone who goes ahead of Qadir and starts believing that Ali is a God, Ali mm. is Allah, they should come back. And anyone who says that Ali is like other people, they should also come An forward. An ordinary person. He's an ordinary person. They should come forward. He is mm. neither Allah, he is neither ordinary. ordinary banda, you know, like a servant. Ali is Mawla. Mawla. Ahsan. Man kuntu Mawla fahada Ali in Mawla. So Ali is Mawla. Ali is Mawla of all the mu'mineen, of all the believers. Of mu'mineen yeah. and mu'minat. So the question that arises here is if Rasulullah is raising the hand of Imam Amir al Mu'mineen, and openly announcing his imama. And of course, as you said, this junction is full of people. Hujjaj that have gone forward are called back. Other hujjaj that are left behind, they are waited for. Now, if all of them have witnessed such an amazing khutbah from the Messenger of Allah, who has openly said that this is my final hajj, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling me back. I must answer the call of my Lord. And I have a very important announcement to make then despite all of that, why is it that it is largely neglected, forgotten, or perhaps not given as much importance as other events in history, which may have no importance at all, where there may be no special arrangement. Here, here um, maybe you can shed light on there were special arrangements made. Uh, there was a member uh, put forward. So why is that? What is the reason for that? Before we go into the event and explain what exactly happened and how everything happened, if we can do that today or probably the next session, I'm not sure. Um, but something very important, so the question that you have raised is a very important question and a question that, um, uh, that still uh, is in the minds of many of the Muslims, that if it was so important, then how could the Sahaba uh, neglect or 
um, undermine the importance of, of Ghadir. Now, this is the main division between all the Muslims. Yes. Now, it, uh, it basically decided that some said it was just like all other merits of Imam Ali alayhi salam. It wasn't the decision of his vilayat and imamat and khilafat. It was a friendship, announcement yeah. of friendship. And that uh, the Holy Prophet uh, uh, loves him and he befriends him and he... Yes. Uh, it, you know, munafiqeen should and the hypocrites should leave the 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 envious feelings against Imam Ali Animosity, animosity against which Imam they have against him, yes. So this is what they say. So this is what some of the brothers, some of the Muslims argue. Now, there are a number of uh, uh, analyses on the event of Ghadir. Why has it been forgotten or why was it undermined? Before I go into Al-Ghadir of Allama Amini, okay. I would like to, because he's the one who's written in depth, in detail, and Abaqa Sahib, Abaqa Adul Anwar, yes. Mir Sayyid Hamid Hussain Musavi, these two scholars have spent a lifetime. And there are many other scholars like Allama Hilli. Inshallah, we will discuss, discuss those. So, Inshallah, we'll come to that, but I don't want to go into that now. But uh, very briefly, I want to uh, give simple analysis. Why did the people undermine? Why did... Well, how come it was forgotten or how come the Sahaba understood, heard everything, mm -hmm. understood everything? Yes. Paid allegiance to Ali ibn Abi Talib -Salam. So because the Holy Prophet did not just announce, he made everyone pay allegiance. So the people who say that the Holy Prophet -Salam, probably did not do his job properly. That he did not, you know, announce it properly. No, he did everything perfect. So he, uh, first of all, got the confirmation of the word Mawla. From the people, do you all understand that I have priority over your souls? Mawla mm -hmm. bit Mawla is not just friend, because there are 17 meanings of the word Mawla in Arabic. Yes. One of them is freed slave, one of them is friend, one of the so many, many different meanings. One of them is Aula bit tasarruf. Mawla is Aula bit tasarruf, someone who has priority or is a master. Yes. Hey, he has priority over your things than yourself. Then you that yourself. is master. And this is the meaning that we accept. That's the meaning that As we Shia, believe. So we believe that the Holy Prophet actually told the meaning of the word first. He said, Yes. Uh, do I not have priority over your souls and you yourselves? So I have more priority over you. So the historians and the traditions say that they all said, Yes, of course. Bala is, of course, a reaffirmation. Yes. It's not Naam. It is Bala. So we confirm that what you're saying is correct. Mm -hmm. Then he said, Man kunto maula. So now I've told you the meaning of uh, uh, maula. I'm now using it. Man kunto maula. Whoever I am the master of, whoever I have priority over their souls and the, they themselves, fahada ali on maula. But still again, then why did the people still ignore it? Now, the simple analysis that I want to uh, um, put forward here is that many times and most of the times, uh, people overlook um, previous events and they live in present. They don't look at past. So they forget the past. They usually forget the past and they have short memories. And unfortunately, what happened after Ghadir was that the Holy Prophet uh, in a, on 18th of Zil Hajj announced and on the way he's poisoned or whatever happens and then he dies, end of Safar. Right. Or beginning of Rabbi Lawal according to some of the other historians. Yes. So two and a half months. Two and a half months and during this, when he becomes ill, they start uh, certain uh, movements uh, within Muslims to take over the government formed by the, the Prophet When the people take over the government, what unfortunately happens is that uh, Imam Ali al-Islam is sidelined and majority of the people who even had heard now, because the things have changed and the government has gone into the hands of some other people, mm. they keep quiet. Not that they had forgotten. Out of fear. Out of fear and most of the people do not confront. Most of the people even today in our age. Right. How many people protest or how many people? Not many. No. So basically most of the people just keep quiet. It has nothing, mm. it's nothing to do with us. So it's not none of our business. Okay. But had nothing happened in Ghadir, um, uh, uh, along the lines of 
uh, announcement of Ali ibn Abi Talib's succession to the Holy Prophet, yes. then why would so many Sahaba oppose to the, uh, the first Khalifa and not pay allegiance to him? Okay. You know, the greatest, uh, you know, the two greatest tribes in Medina were Aus and Khazraj. The leader of the Khazraj was Hazrat Sa'ad ibn Ubadah radiallahu anhu. Yeah. Till his death, he never paid allegiance to the first Khalifa. To the first Khalifa, yes, that's right. Someone like Abu Dhar, someone like Salman, someone like Miqdad, Ammar ibn Yasir, even Zubair, who was a son-in-law of the first Khalifa, never paid allegiance till the end of his life, and this is in Sahih Bukhari. Okay. So the second Khalifa has been shown in Sahih Bukhari, in Kitab al-Ahkam, Bab uh, Rajmul Hubla. So you know there are many many different chapters. Chapters. You know there are thirty Jews ajza of the Holy Quran, and that's how Bukhari is divided. So chapter number ninety-four, basically in the sense that uh, when it talks about Kitab al-Ahkam, Bab, you know, so Ahkam meaning uh, judiciary, you know, like rulings. Bab Rajmul Hubla. If a woman is pregnant, then how, is she stoned or not? In that, uh, Imam Muhammad ibn Ismail al-Bukhari, in his Sahih, a Sahih Bukhari, he mentions the sermon of Second Khalifa. Right, okay. You know, the Ba'at of Abu Bakr was a mistake and Allah saved the Ummah from its, uh, uh, from its wrath and from its uh, evil. So he says all of those things. And he said, we used to read Ayat al-Rajm. Rajm meaning the stoning of the... Um, uh, elderly man and woman and today it's not present so he believes in Tahrif of Quran and then again he says um, you know uh, many of the Sahaba of the people of Mecca and many people of Medina never paid allegiance to the first Khalifa, the first khalifa. وَمِنْ هُمْ عَلَيٌ وَزُبَيْرٌ Mm-hmm. Amongst the people who did not pay allegiance to the first Khalifa were Ali and Zubair. So he says it very clearly that uh, they did not pay allegiance. So he says many people did not. And amongst them were these. When asked uh, why, you know, so you're my son-in-law and you're not paying allegiance, well, I don't, I don't want to forget Ghadir, you know. Right. And you don't, it's not your right. And uh, Hazrat Saad ibn Ubada, he said, no, I will not pay allegiance to the first Khalifa because... I do remember Ghadir and Abu Dhar. Right. So many Sahaba. So they did protest. There was some opposition. Yeah, so there is, a, you know, the, and the greatest protest is from Ali ibn Abi Talib himself. Of course. So him claiming that it is my right. You either say that he is wrong, or you say he's right. Right. There is no third scenario. There is no third choice. Right. So very clearly the Holy Prophet in his life, and this is in Shia, Sunni, both books, Aliyun ma al haqq wa al haqq ma aliyun. Allah madar al haqq ka madar Ali. Oh Allah, Ali is with haqq. Ali is with the truth, and the truth is with Ali. Ali bin Talib. Ali salam. And wherever you see, oh Allah, turn the truth to wherever Ali turns. So this is a sign that the Holy Prophet says, if he claims and if he says something, then he's on the right. He's the truth. He will, you know, the truth will follow him. And I think that is one of the highest position anyone can attain. That the Messenger of Allah is saying, Oh Allah, turn haq in the direction of Ali. Ali. I don't think anyone can attain a higher rank. status or rank than this because we are asked to follow haq. We are asked to go towards haq. But here we see haq is going towards Imam Amir al Mu'mineen. So, did Imam Amir al Mu'mineen, are there any examples that Imam Amir al Mu'mineen would, after Ghadir, after Rasulullah, he would confront people and he would ask them, do you not remember Ghadir? Or for example, uh, maybe you can shed some light on his words in Nahjul Balagha, that he would complain to people that my haq was taken from me. Are there any examples where he would go to prominent personalities and from amongst the Sahaba that have you forgotten Ghadir? Can you shed some light on that please? We have proofs that uh, not only just Imam Ali salam, but also Fatima Zahra salam alayha. Uh, they both Sahaba. actually uh, made a point to the Sahaba and also you know, Fatima Zahra Salana to the ladies that how quickly have you forgotten uh, mm. Ghadir and the events that took place unfolded in Ghadir and uh, 
So Imam al-Islam, in Nahjub al in many sermons, and especially sermon number three, Khutbah Sheikh Shaqiya, yes. and other places as well, he p- makes a point that لَقَدْ تَقَمَّ سَحَابِ نَوْبِ قَحَافَ That Ibn Abi Qahafa, you know, so-and-so, ha, you, know, لقد, you know, he wore my shirt, meaning khilafat. It is a parable he uses. Mm-hmm. That, you know, if a shirt doesn't fit you and you wear it, you, you can tell that it doesn't it's fit you. It's not your size. It's not your size. Right. So he says that, لَقَدْ تَقَمَّ سَحَابِ Ibn Abi Someone put my shirt on and they knew that it doesn't fit them. It doesn't fit them. It wasn't their size and uh, it was my shirt. And then he says what they did uh, by wearing the shirt. And he says, well, when he died, uh, he left behind another person to, to, you know, the shirt for another person. The second The second. So, so he took the shirt and then uh, it wasn't uh, for very long until he died and he gave it to the third. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and they knew my position. Mm-hmm. I don't want to say the full sermon, but he says that while they all knew that my position uh, in Khilafat is like that of the central uh, nail of uh, uh, the pivot, the pivot. I'm the pivotal. You know, I'm the pivot of uh, uh, the you know the grind. You know, in olden days they would have two big stones. Right. Uh, they had a hole in the middle and they would hold the two stones with a pivot or a nail. Okay. And the center point. Center point. And uh, you would mash the grains into flour through that. Right. Okay. Yes. So you would put the grains and they would basically, because they were two rocks, they would just grind uh, the, 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 the grains. Right. Okay. And the central point is, uh, that is called Raha in Arabic. Raha. And Qutb is basically... Uh, the the cent, you know the central nail. Okay. If you take it out, the two stones cannot move because if you try and move it, it just comes off. Okay. So it remains into its position so long as it has that qutb. So that is the crucial point, crucial part of that mechanism. That mechanism has a crucial part, and that is called qutb. Qutb. Imam Ali Islam says they knew that my position in khilafat is like that of qutb. Right. Okay. In that mechanism, so I am the central point. So if you take me out, Islam will fall apart. He says Khilafat doesn't exist without me. Secondly, then he says, yeah. He says when it rains, the water will not the mountain. the water goes down the mountain, can't go up the mountain because the mountain is high. Right, okay. He says uh, when, even if a flood comes, I am so high that it only can flow down. No flood, no water can ever reach my peak. Okay. He, I'm so high. He means in terms of merit. In terms of merit, I'm so high. Uh, this is a parable again he's using. Uh-huh, okay. So he says that, you know, mountains are so high that basically the flood, you know, the, the flood only runs down. Yes. The water doesn't reach the peaks of the, the mountains. The peaks of the mountains. He says that uh, my position is so high that the water only goes, I, you know, the water can't reach me. Mm-hmm. The best of the birds, if they were flying, they could not fly to the peak of Ali ibn Talib. So some mountains are so high that the birds cannot fly to the top. Mm. He says, I am such a mountain that no bird can fly uh, to the position where I am, to my peak. To my peak. So this is me and he says, uh, If the people had not come and there was... Uh, no hujjah, there was no proof against me to now accept the bayat of the people. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Allah had not taken uh, a promise, a covenant from the learned, from the ulama, meaning the learned. The learned people. Them, not ulama like us. Not yeah. ulama, here he only means the infallible, the, the ones who have uh, vast knowledge. Okay. So, so so he says that, and Allah had not taken a covenant that whenever there is a problem, the ulama will rise and they will guide. Mm-hmm. You know, I would have left the the reins of the uh, the camel mm-hmm. on its back and let it go, meaning I would not take the khilafat into my own hands. 
He doesn't see it of much importance. So he says, even at the fourth position, I was now um, um, uh, basically content. Mm -hmm. And I would have not accepted Khilafat, even at the fourth position, had it not been such a big problem that Allah had taken a covenant that no, even when they come late, you still have to guide them. Because it is a role of the Imam. It is a role duty. and it is the duty of the Imam right. that he has to guide mm -hmm. and the people are his subject. So he says that I only took the position because it is a covenant I had made to God and that I took the position and I have now started to guide the people again. Um, so it is, you know, he has made the point through his life during the time of the three Khulafa that it is my right that has been taken away from me. In terms of announcing the Imam and Wilayah of Imam Amir Mu'minin in Ghadir, I don't know what your understanding on that is, but it is the final time he perhaps announced it, but definitely not the first time. Yeah. I think if you study the life of Rasulullah again and again and again, he announced the Imam and Wilayah of Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib, because some people, they believe that Ghadir Khum, Imam Amir Mu'minin was announced as Wali and Wasi and Imam, and before that, well, that was not the case. However, if, if we do study the life, I think from the very first open da'wah of Islam in the house of uh, Abu Talib, uh, it was announced that uh, the Messenger of Allah says, anyone who will support me will be my wali, will be my wasi. Mm. So I'm sure you can probably shed more light on many occasions where Imam Amir Mu'min was announced openly. Um, so even from da'wah to the ashira, the... the, the and the invitation uh, to the family members. The Holy Prophet Sallallahu said, uh, whoever helps me in my mission, فَهُوَ أَخِي وَوَسِيِّي وَوَزِيرِي Yes. Um, and in some places, Tabari in his, uh, a Sunni historian, in his uh, tarikh says, أَخِي, my brother, وَوَسِيِّي, my successor, وَوَزِيرِي, my wazir after me. But in his tafsir he says, وَخَلِيفَتِي Okay, so he adds that in tafsir. So in one of the places he says, uh, and also Khalifa, the Holy Prophet said that. Right. Um, but obviously he answers it because he's not a Shia. Mm -hmm. That yes, Ali was the successor, was the Khalifa, but at the fourth position. Okay. So that's how they answer it. So he says, yes, he became the Khalifa. And even if he became at the, at the fourth, position, fourth position, then that we believe that the Holy Prophet should have, a point, uh, should have pointed out, had it been his intent that even if he becomes a Khalifa at the fourth position, it is accept acceptable for me. Right. And for him not pointing out the other three is a clear indication that it was only intended for Ali ibn Abi Talib mm -hmm. So they believe that it was, uh, it was announced that whoever helps me in my mission will be my successor, but it could be, could be fourth. The Holy Prophet doesn't say it, but they, they, that's their explanation to it. Now, we believe that from the day one, the Holy Prophet, when he announced that he's a messenger, until Ghadir, he announced not once or twice, but continuously. For example, in Tabuk, when he's leaving, he says, Ali minni bi manzilati Harun amin Musa, illa annahu la nabiya ba'di. Okay. Ali is to me like Harun is to Musa, except there is no prophet after me. Meaning he's successor, but he's not a Nabi. And this is in both Sunni and Shia Sunni and, and Shia The other hadith that is in both Shia and Sunni, uh, book says, Ana Madina to Le Elme wa Ali Yun Babuha. Faman Ara the Le Elma Faliatil Bab. I'm the city of knowledge and Ali is its gate. Whoever wants knowledge then come to the gate. Okay. So we believe the source of knowledge is the source of ethics of the Holy Prophet and is the source of the government of the Holy Prophet. Is the so it cannot be that the Holy Prophet chooses Ali al -Salam, to be the source of knowledge. Like some of the Sufi brothers, Sunni Sufis have gone into saying, like Ibn Arabi and others, uh, or pr presently the Hal Qadri, that yes, Ali, this hadith is also true, but Ali is Khalifa to Bila Faslin in Imam, in, in uh, Ilm, knowledge, like Ibn Arabi and you know, some of the So these people will say that Ali is the uh, successor of the Holy Prophet, Khalifa Bila Fasl, right. without any gap okay. between him and between the Holy Prophet and Imam Ali, there is no gap. But only in knowledge. Only in knowledge. So this is... So this is what they try and this is what they have manipulated. They have manipulated it, yes. So, and the second one, they say that in, uh, in politics, it is uh, the first Khalifa, for example. Mm -hmm. He is the Khalifa Bila Fasl. 
and in uh, in ethics or in ma'naviyat or in uh, spirituality it's someone else it is the sahaba for example right the okay. other sahaba so we believe that if a person is incapable is ali ibn abi talib ma'adallah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the most learned in knowledge but then hang on a minute if he's most learned in everything then why is he lacking politics or spirituality because ilm is the ma'yar of these things it is the basic and then if you go to all the sufi silsilas all the silsilas except for naqshbandiya mm -hmm. all the silsilas take spirituality from the holy prophet through ali ibn talib alayhi salam so they all believe it is ali alayhi salam straight out of the holy prophet right okay and no one else in between except for naqshbandiya and they believe it is uh, someone else right it is abu bakr for example now so even in spirituality the people believe that he is and we believe and that's what we believe he in knowledge and also he is the greatest of uh, the politicians because he is huwa aqdaakum we have a tradition of the holy prophet ali is the best of the judge amongst you in aqdaakum ali. ali from amongst all of my sahab ali is the best qadi right so the best qadi is also the best politician again he is adil the yadi wa yadu aliyan fil qada'i sawa my hand and ali's hand in judiciary is equal so the pivotal role for the government is judiciary governance he is adil he is the most just mm -hmm. so when he has all of the qualities then how could you uh, uh, overlook his position and consider even consider someone else that's what we have problem with in fact they say that imam amir mu'minin was killed for the shiddat of his justice for the he was extreme in uh, making justice amongst the people he was yeah he was perfect in establishing the justice and uh, the christian writer says that i have seen many people being killed for injustice but only one person killed le shiddat adalatihi because of Uh, uh, for his justice, for establishing justice, because people couldn't take it, because people were used to of so much corruption, they could not take the justice of Ali ibn Abi Talib, alayhi salatu wasalam. May there are also other traditions that perhaps try to cover the fadila of Imam Amir al-Mu'min. For example, the same tradition you mentioned, "Ana Madina tul ilm wa Aliyun babuha." Then they have added that Fulan is the uh, the walls, and someone is the saqaf, the roof. And someone is a gutter, but you see, all of those traditions. People have tried to add other Sahaba in the traditions, but you need to look at the original sources uh, first. And none of those have the other people added to them. It was later on by Bani Umayyah and Bani Abbas who wanted to justify, and so they added a lot of the words. But I think we should stick to the original sources where they don't have those words. Um, and so this was propaganda by Bani Umayyah. Yeah, and and Bani Abbas, and much later. Right. Okay. So it was basically Bani Abbas and the much later scholars who added. So yeah. those people who were the roofs and the walls, they don't even know that they are the roofs and no. the walls. No. Because it happened so much later. You see, if all of the proofs that the people are now writing for uh, some of the Sahaba, if those proofs were correct, then why did those Sahaba not uh, bring those proofs to Ali ibn Abi Talib and to the masses in their own time? to prove that they are the rightful successors mm -hmm. when they were objected yes yes when people made objections no they did not ever say that yes i have proved that i am the successor they never brought this stuff no forward. not the ayat and the traditions that the other people are bringing mm. thank you very much for your time it was an honor to have you on our program and we again congratulate the mu'minin and mu'minat for this great day of eid al ghadir inshallah we shall join you again in our next op episode with the Uh, same topic with our very special guest Sayyid Ali Raza Rizvi Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Ala Rasulullah idha daraka hawla Man kuntu mawlahu fa hadha al-yawm mawla Admin al-deen yawm al-ghadir Ali Haydar al-karra sara Sara amin